I'm Bob James um, and Horizon Boats was established 30 years ago. This is uh, boat number one. Um, we kept this boat. This was our original test boat that, that we used. Um, we tested it for stability, for load, for compliance, various engines, trim angles and so on before we went into full production. Um, I've kept it ever since. It's been um, pretty well my little baby since. Um, it was used by my oldest boy, Scott James, when he was very young to obtain uh, his license and learn how to uh, drive a boat and went fishing with his mates. Um, I launched it on numerous occasions for him and with a six horsepower on the back so he could go around the broad water and do some fishing. And it was all probably part of our research and development as well. So yeah, I've got fond, fond memories of this boat. It was built out of all 1.6 marine grade aluminium. Um, it was all done in that, well, originally we used it unpainted and then we used it in a painted form to see how the paint and our techniques would hold up on it. Um, and it's recently been repainted, mainly just to tidy the boat up. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we started off very small in Burley Heads. Um, I'd been in the industry a long time prior to that with various other aluminium companies, and we just felt it was time to, to do it ourselves. Um, originally started it with my brother-in-law, uh, Trevor Young, my wife, and a single employee that was an aluminium welder that was a, a really good hand. Um, and as I say, that was a small factory in, in Burley. Um, and we built it up from there. We, we quickly um, outgrew that, that factory um, and we had then an opportunity to go from a rented factory to a factory we purchased at Corumban, um, which um, we, we spent um, many years um, there because we've, we've only been in the current premises for, for three years. Um, and we, we developed it to a point the model range grew our customer base grew to we finally were bursting at the, the seams and had to look for a, some, a new premises. Um, the premises at that point were very difficult to find, um, but we stumbled across this block of land in the marine precinct, which of course is an ideal place for us to be. So um, this is a, a 9,000 square metre block um, and we're doing it in two stages. The factory you see behind us is the stage one and the spare land we intend to build a NOAA factory on, which depending on the time frame, depending on uh, the dollars, um, we, we hope to get done in the next couple of years. So Horizon's now our mother company and Horizon manufacturer. Um, and a number of years ago now, we took over the manufacturing of Stessel boats and have been steadily developing those boats um, into a full range of um, press boats and plate boats and we've also recently launched the Horizon plate range to roll out to our dealers. 30 years ago I would not have dreamed that um, we would be in the position that we are today. Um, we only ever intended to build basically small boats to satisfy that market but as you're aware, markets change. So we had to adapt to those markets. Um, our dealer network has grown, the demand on us has grown. So from those few employees, mainly family plus one, um, it's now into 65 people um, and still expanding. We are very proud of the fact that we are an Australian company that does all our own design development and in-house work. Um, we got a lot of feedback from when we do boat shows around the country and we listen to the customers. And we then try to bring their thoughts back into our products. We have to build a safe boat. Um, we do a lot of testing to achieve that. Um, and it needs to be appealing to the consumer. Having said that, we have 65 employees um, I'm also very proud of the fact that two of my boys, my only two boys, um, work within the, the, the company. 
Um, Scott, the oldest of the two, is our general manager, and Robert is our purchasing officer, plus many other things. Because even though they may have fancy titles, they spend probably 50% of their time or more on the factory floor. And if that requires pushing a broom or cleaning a toilet or doing whatever's necessary, they do it. Um, so they have their, their desk jobs, but they're certainly not limited to their desk jobs. Mm. People often ask me, how long will I stay involved in the business? Um, I find the business is a way of life to me and not just a job. So I will be around hopefully for a lot longer to come. I still dream of boat designs. I can vividly see a design and come into work and say, hey, I've got some ideas. Um, sometimes those ideas are not feasible at the time and we put them on the back burner for a while. Sometimes the market isn't ready for what goes through my head, um, but I'm sure one day that it will be. So as far as retirement goes, if you ask my wife, she'd say tomorrow. Um, however, um, there's no way that I could just stop doing this. Um, I love it, it's my passion, and it's a way of life to me, and not a job. Mm. I would have a probably a 4.2 side console with a range of 50 or 60 horsepower on the back, a bimini, something I could launch and retrieve on my own or take a couple of friends with me just to be able to duck out for a few hours rather than a, a big heavy rig. I love the, I love the big boats, but uh, I'm, I'm now 72, I don't normally admit that, um, but at my age, something of that nature would be a far better boat for me. I could cruise the broad water, go up the Narang River, do all of those sort of things, go into Moreton Bay, go to Bribey, um, have a lot of fun at very little expense. Um, and I find those sort of boats are a little bit like a sports car on water. And I also love sports cars. So um, that suits my style of driving. Um, quick, easy to handle and launch and retrieve and doesn't cost a fortune. People often ask me, well, where's the future? Where's boating going? What, what, what are we doing? Um, I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen a lot of things that um, were new in their day. We stopped building them because the demand fell off, but we always kept the patterns. And 10 years down the track, that model suddenly becomes popular again. That may be because of the price of fuel or something to do with the economy or just the way the industry is going. Um, so we can normally get those patterns back out, look at them, change them, modify them to suit that current market. Um, even as a, a kid, I used to play around in boats with uh, Chapman engines, single cylinder type timber, timber boats, very cheap to run, but still had a lot of fun in those boats. They were great. Um, so I always see that the boating industry will be there, particularly in this country. It's our way of life. And if you live around the Queensland area, it's your birthright to be able to get out on Moreton Bay, go crabbing, have a lot of fun, enjoy it with your family. So it's something that will never die. Hmm. A quick history of myself, I was born a little town in England called Isle of Wight, uh, the Kays on the Isle of Wight, which is a boating town, which was shipbuilding, sailing, um, all of those sort of things. So whether it be a power boat, whether it be a rowing boat, or any of those things, we're always on the water. Um, in fact, to earn some money back in those days when I was, I was very young, we used to mine people's boats when over the summer months when the, the yachting was on. Um, dinghies would come ashore and it would be mind your dinghy for you, sir. So they would pay your money to mind their dinghy so it didn't go adrift throughout the day. Um, you would then use that dinghy to ferry other people to their boats. And if it was slack, you would go around and ask if they wanted their top sides cleaned. So you earned money that way. And then it would be off to the, the paper run. 
Um, I used to um, sail on uh, dinghies um, and my father worked in the um, manufacturing industry and in actual fact he worked on the um, first ever hovercraft, the SRN-1, which I was lucky enough to be at the, the launching of. Um, but in 1965, my parents decided that um, we, we would emigrate. Uh, my father, by the way, was an ex-submariner. Um, he, he was based in um, Fremantle in World War II. Um, so we've always had a strong connection with the water. Um, one of my first jobs in the country was working at the Apewood Bain School as junior boatman on the Hawkesbury River, um, where we looked after all of the, the boats that we had there, which canoes, kayaks, all sorts of things. We had a couple of de Havilland little runabouts we, we used to um, use in that, that era. Um, and um, there was also a ferry that I used to drive to go down to Brower to pick up the, the students and drop them back down there again at the, the end of the Edward Band course. Um, I was then approached by one of the directors of the Edward Band School to whether I'd come and join him on his yacht in Sydney Harbour um, to look after a 50-foot schooner called Bittern, which I did for a number of years, taking it to the reef on a few occasions um, and um, weekend sailing with his friends and so on. Um, so from, from there, after a few years of that, I joined a company called Mitchell's Marine in Sydney in Rockdale that also happened to own Clark Aluminium boats. So hence my first involvement with the aluminium boat side in the, the late 60s. Um, I worked with, with him for a number of years um, before I left that organisation and joined Volvo Penta to set up their um, dealer network for the Volvo Penta eightboard engines around New South Wales. Um, from there, I was asked to come back into a, a retail outlet, um, which I did, um, which was a brand new outlet at the point, and we were selling um, Stessel boats with Alf Stessel had only recently started. Um, so I got used to, to that brand of, of aluminium boat. Um, I also, a new company was starting up in Sydney called Seal Aluminium Boats at the time, um, which I did a lot of work with them with Andrew Short Marine. Um, then eventually it was time that, um, oh, I did a short stint with a company called Plastimo as well in Sydney. Um, looking after um, New South Wales. But it, it became a time for me where my wife and myself were in Sydney, um, prices were going up, we'd actually only just brought a house, and um, my wife's parents lived on the Gold Coast, and I, I said to my wife, I'd really like to live on the Gold Coast, and she said, well, we've just brought a house. And I said, well, how about we just put it on the market, see what happens, and if it sells, we go, if it doesn't, we stay. We made one phone call and the real estate agent brought it. Um, so we were off. Um, working when I arrived here with Noddy Williams of Mustang Boats. Uh, that didn't last too long. Um, but I'd also been dealing a little bit with Elf Stessel on um, trailers. Um, Elf spoke to me and said, hey, my time is up since I, nearly up since I sold the company. Do we want to get back into aluminium boats? So Alf and myself worked on the new range of aluminium boats that he released at, at that point. Um, after working with us for a number of years and having the ups and downs of that organisation, I decided it was time to do it myself. And 30 years later, here we are. Hmm. But talking about dreams, um, I, I'll give you a couple of those very quickly. One is when we were building this, we had to build that big pit out there for drainage. And my mind through the night went back to, we were building this big expensive bloody pit, which is a pain in the ass, um, and explosive technology. And in World War II, they developed, you'd do a concrete mould, a little bit like a swimming pool, the shape of the boat, weld the aluminium sheets up, then you put the explosives in, it blows it out no and stretch way. forms it to, to the mould. <laughs> that's that, for real. That's for real, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's a method. And it came into my mind that 
uh, fuel was going up, this was going up, we're going to build a yacht. Um, and the whole dream was so much, it was a twin keel, so you could use it in the broad water. It was a trailer sailor, because trailer sailors were big, but the cars weren't capable of taking them. Now the cars are capable of taking them, trailer sailors have died. But this was a twin keel, so it could sit on the ground at low tide without falling yeah, over, yeah. so you could, you could live on board it. Um, it was 24 foot long and it was called the broad water and it was done on this explosive technology. That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, 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 and talking about another one, awesome. I had another dream about a performance boat. It had a big flat on it, basically about that wide, so the big plank running through it. It has, has two tunnel scallops at the rear. It narrows back to a conventional Ooh. hole at the front. And I dreamt that we were approached by an engine company like Honda that had developed a 60 horsepower basic engine, but it was twin turbo. It put out more like 200 horsepower out of this engine, it had a real small trunk on it. It had a twin speed on it. Could you were talking about that other one today. Yep. And it had a variable speed prop on it. And they approached us to build a boat that was lightweight, that could take this performance. And that was the boat. That was it. That was Came the boat. The dream. Came <laughs> in the dream, the whole lot. Yeah.